Good morning. I'm Dr. Robert. And on this edition of Five-ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, I'm going to talk about coffee. Coffee is something that many people, including me, look forward to having in the morning. Coffee, for me, is a good example of the truism of the Ayurvedic principle that any substance and any action can have three possible effects on you as an individual. It can act as a food, or a medicine, or a poison. And I believe that coffee has the potential to act as food, medicine, or poison. And uh, I'm sad to say that I see many people, if not the majority of coffee drinkers, using it as a poison. Using it without attention to when and why they're employing it, using uh, poisonous varieties of it, and not ever giving their bodies a rest from it. So, in my opinion, if one wants to use coffee in a healthy way, one first of all finds out whether you can, whether your system agrees with coffee at all or not. You will, if, if it, a substance should taste good to you if, when you take it in, unless it's some very ob obvious medicine. But if you're going to be using it as a food, slash medicine, then it needs to, your body needs to sense a goodness in the taste. Coffee's taste is very complex. It's pungent, meaning spicy, uh, it has a lot of essential oils in it, it's, there's a sourness, there's some acids there, and, and it's also bitter in a particular way. And it's intense. So, in order to take in something intense, you have to do that at a time that you're going to be able to be relatively calm yourself so you can experience the effect in a positive way instead of having your vodka get really jangled. It's very important to drink good quality coffee. It should taste good. There are many different tastes in coffee. Figure out what you like. It's important to get organic because the oils will pick, uh, pick up the... Um, uh, organic-based chemicals, the fertilizers and pesticides, it's all too easy for them to get into your cup. If you use decaf, and I do, always use Swiss water processed decaf, because otherwise it will get decaffeinated with methylene chloride, which also you don't want to be drinking. Um, there are many different uh, methods for creating coffee. My personal favorite is the AeroPress. I was not paid by them to uh, endorse it. Um, and there, uh, however long you use coffee during a, your year, you should have at least a total of four weeks during which you do not drink it, so your body will not feel that it is always going to be present and start to use it as a crutch. My personal preferred way of consuming coffee is by adding fats to it, in particular coconut oil and ghee, and foaming the fats and drinking it that way because I personally find that drinking coffee without having, it, before having anything else in the morning with fat allows me to work for uh, a couple, two, three more hours on the basis of that fat being burned before I have um, food for the day. And I find that that works very well for me. It may not work for you. It's important with any substance or any action to experiment with it to find out what does work for you. Find a way in which you and it can establish a healthy relationship. So I personally like to use fats. I also enjoy using milk or milk substitutes uh, frequently. Um, uh, what I personally do not use is sugar, and my personal feeling is that if you do use sugar in your coffee, you may not really like the taste of coffee, and you therefore may need to reevaluate and find out whether in fact you and coffee are a good fit for one another. So it's very important to Find out the right amount of caffeine that your body can take in at any one moment. Uh, it's imp important not to get used to having more than one or at the most two cups of coffee during the day. That's enough for human physiology. Um, take advantage of this wonderful beverage if, in fact, it is a beverage that is wonderful for you. And if, it is, if that is the case, then I wish all of you a particularly excellent, good coffee morning.